Now, Hollywood, um, speaking of technology, has been, you know, smashing the theatrical window, which has been in place for the last 30 years. Now, if you're not aware, you know, um, HBO came out, cable TV came out. Um, movies were always exclusively in theaters and then cable came out and they said, okay, well, we're going to start windowing content to cable and then to broadcast television and then DVDs came out and then now pay-per-view and live streaming and they have all of these windows and there's been a very, very methodical way that Hollywood has released content through these windows to maximize their revenue. Now, what happened in, now that the theaters, and the theaters have always been really number one there. Now, DVD sales and Blu-ray sales for a while were catching up, but now that's kind of gone away and everything's live streaming. And so the movie, the, the, the theaters are a key pillar in the revenue strategy of Hollywood, especially for blockbusters. Now, theaters have been shut down around the world and and some pretty big movies had been released in the midst of the theater shutdown. And so what Hollywood had to do, or they felt they had to do, was rush those to video on demand. So they've kind of created this new thing called premium video on demand, which is blockbuster movies or potential blockbusters getting in the home before you normally would be able to see them. And they're charging between $20 and $30 for them. And there were some pretty big films, Birds of Prey from the DC Universe, Bloodshot with Vin Diesel, Doolittle with Robert Downey, The Gentleman, The Way Back, and coming up soon, Trolls World Tour, I think just launched yesterday. And these are available on Prime, uh, Amazon Prime and Apple TV and Google Play and anywhere you get um, streaming pay-per-view videos. Now, the tentpole features um, the big ones, right? So Wonder Woman 1984, Marvel's Black Widow, the new James Bond No Time to Die movie, Fast and Furious 9. Now these are films that have the potential to earn a billion dollars or more in the box office. So Hollywood has delayed those and they're not going to rush them. Um, and they're hoping that theaters get open in July is kind of right now the conventional wisdom within the industry. And we'll see what happens with that over time. But because these movies have so much earnings potential, they don't want to rush them to home video because nobody's really tested out how much premium video on demand can generate. Now, this all kind of came to a head last fall with the release of Netflix's The Irishman. Now, The Irishman was the first true potential blockbuster for Netflix. It was starred Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and Joe Pesci, and it was directed by the legendary Martin Scorsese. And Netflix wanted it to show in theaters, and they wanted to run a 45, they offered a 45-day window to the theater companies, and the exhibition had said, mm, we really want 90 days. Um, and I think the, the theaters felt like they had leverage. And so what they did was they said no, there were a couple of hundred independent theaters that ran it. Netflix gave it to them for three weeks and then brought it home to home video to stream on the Netflix platform. Now, theater owners say that it's about the shared experience, that the reason that theaters are so important is people really go to theaters for that communal movie watching experience. But if you look at their actions, it seems that it's about exclusivity and scarcity. They think that people go to movies because you can't see it anywhere else. And if you want to see it, you got to go to the theater. And they see streaming platforms as an existential threat. And they saw cable TV as an existential threat. And they saw, <clears throat> they saw DVD and Blu-ray as an existential threat. What they didn't see coming as the existential threat was the coronavirus. Um, and so now we're starting to see some research come out from some polls. And this is interesting. So 47% of people recently said that the going to a major public event will scare them for a long time. And about movies, 49% said it's going to be a few months to possibly never before they return to a movie theater. And overall, 28% said they're going to go to movies less often. Now, the head of the National Association of Theater Owners, Patrick Corkin, recently said, people are really, really bad at predicting their future behavior, and I do tend to agree with him, but we can look at their past behavior to see the trend. Now, this chart comes to us from Randy White at White Hutchinson, and I've talked about his blog a lot. If you're still not following him, go check him out. And this is how many visits per person in North America to movie theaters in the last 20 years. And you can see it looks like it's in terminal decline. And so the combination of this trend and the acceleration of movies 
shutting down is going to change the distribution model for movies once again. Now, on the plus side for theater owners, a company called Vista Group has partnered with Screen Plus, which has a custom cinema streaming platform. And so where the big studios are going direct through Apple iTunes and Amazon Prime, the theater owners are kind of cut out. And so what Vista Group is doing is partnering with independent theaters and independent studios to allow the theater companies to have their own premium video on demand offerings for their customers in their local market. And so they recently announced an indie film called The Road's Not Taken, which is going to be available. 200 theaters so far have signed up and they're going to offer it to homes for $12 for a three day window. And that revenue is going to be split between the distributor and the theater. Now, not to be left out, Alamo Draft House, which is another kind of indie theater entertainment dining experience, has released recipes, kind of like the Disney um, churro bites, but apparently they have these buffalo cauliflower vegan bites that are insanely delicious and really popular. And so what they're doing now is they've got, they're creating an out of, at home initiative and they're releasing their recipes um, to their customers to be able to enjoy while they're watching movies at home. And it's just another way for entertainment companies to stay connected with their audience in a virtual way. Now, all of this means business models are changing right before our eyes. Distribution channels are collapsing and you have to meet the consumer where they are and you have to try to figure out where they're going to want to be. And it's really early and we really don't know yet. Um, now, theater operators, tent poles aren't going direct. The movie theaters need you to be in business because they know that a billion dollars is not going to come through direct video on demand yet. Um, but other films are going to change and you're going to have to pivot um, to in-home experiences with food delivery, virtual viewing parties, and anything else you can do to stay connected with your customers. And no matter what type of retail entertainment business you're in, or retail business that, for that matter, you need to figure out how to stay connected to your customers.